think some key words in that is connecting our local food communities, producers, um, people who sell food. Um, and this will be kind of the third public meeting we've had uh, since Food Democracy event, where we've got people together in the community to kind of learn about the different gardens and what's going on. So everybody's welcome to that. It's usually a potluck. And, and so that'll be more about the nuts and bolts of the garden, uh, the seeds and tools, if you will. Planning the gardens and who's going to start what plants and when and what our timeline's going to be like. And then I also wanted to say that next Saturday we're co-hosting a CD Saturday event here at the farmer's market, probably in this room. And that'll be our fifth annual. And this will actually be our seventh season of community gardening in Aurelia. Um, we also have an ongoing volunteer drive where we're actively seeking out volunteers. And we have kind of a little volunteer uh, organizing group that's forming to try to intake volunteers and orient them and then to get them connected to the different gardens and opportunities available. Um, we have, like Andy mentioned, a request into the city for compost. And donation and delivery to some of the gardens, which would be a big uh, improvement over previous years. And also a potential new site behind the beer store at St. Uh, uh, David's, or St. Uh, David, H. David H. Church. Yeah. It's actually, it's because the line of the beer store and the property line is a little bit further back in the building than we thought it was, it uh, could fall on beer store property as well. Beer store is ready to work with us, and they know liability and so with this additional space, then we'll be able to kind of invite the community, the broader community in to try to increase the capacity, to try to actually get more food growing in the city to try to meet some of that, that need. Uh, yesterday I received a really exciting call from a member of the Simcoe County District School Board who um, they're working on having outdoor classrooms uh, involving uh, kids gardening. And so they want to have little food boxes at every school in, uh, in the county. And last year, with the help of the Food Council, we were able to bring together teachers and camp counselors and gardeners and parents to, um, to develop three pilot programs, little food boxes, and to engage the kids. And this will be kind of the next level where we're going to be, uh, we've been asked to kind of educate the educators. And so that we're going to have access to about 50 or 60 teachers uh, on, a, on a day to go through it and to begin to <coughs> curriculum programs and to give them the resources and support they need to deliver programming uh, for the kids from kindergarten grade four. We'll, they want to start really young. And so with the help of the Food Council, it's, it's a big support to have the whole community behind it so that the teachers aren't doing this alone and that they have the support, especially in the off season when they're not necessarily there. Um, we've been drafting, we have a draft letter to the city we're gonna launch uh, probably after the spring rush is over, where we're going to make a formal request to create some kind of community garden policy working group where we can get uh, members of the community and with city staff and other stakeholders to get together to start talking about what a community garden policy might look like, um, how to start new gardens, how the city can support gardens, uh, different expectations and roles and responsibilities. And there's been a, a number of cities, like Wealth has mentioned, in Peterborough and Toronto and other cities have developed community garden policies as well as urban agriculture strategies. And so that's something we're looking to, to initiate this spring. And uh, we also have a newsletter, uh, social media, Facebook, and a little website uh, for really community gardens. So that's about it at the moment. If anybody has any questions? Oh yeah, Andy, yeah. We're also making maple syrup this year from the Delaware uh, Region Park United Church. We have 17 treats, top 19 tops. This uh, came off the pot at 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, wow. 21 hours boil time for 4 liters, 2 tanks of propane. So to fund the propane, I'm selling uh, a liter for $25 worth, and that'll fund the tank. If anybody's interested. Nice. <laughs> Well, I also wanted to mention, um, we, the last couple of years we've partnered with uh, different community partners, in particular Scott's and Information Aurelia and different food banks to do the Grow a Row campaign. And so on April 25th, I think it's a Saturday, we'll be gathering uh, with local youth to plant seeds and these seedlings will then be distributed amongst uh, all the community gardens in the city and anybody who wants to grow. 
to be able to grow food to give back to local food banks and, and meal programs. And then we also have the seed library, the early seed library here in the public library, which is a community resource for people who want to grow gardens and uh, grow food and plants. And then we deliver programming here at the library for that. We've also been in collaboration with Lakehead and to have gardens at Lakehead. And I would estimate there's upwards of 20 self-identified community gardens in and around the Amelia area, as well as a new uh, Indigenous Community Gardening Collective that's been forming over the last over the last several months, uh, which I think is really exciting, and that's involving a number of different, uh, uh, like the Na Early Native Women's Center and Natig Healing Center and Lodge and, and different friendship centers in the area to develop uh, Indigenous gardening and food uh, programming. And so that's a really interesting uh, project that's happening as well. Volunteers who are facilitating, and then the funds that we've needed for um, supplies, like some, some food supplies or some gardening supplies, I believe most of it has come through Camp Kuchijing. They have a community initiative um, program, like other programs that happen in the schools, and they've been supporting supporting the group, which has pretty been, hasn't been very costly right now um, in terms of materials. Right. Yeah. But your time. But our time, there's a lot of time yeah. <coughs> from, staff, uh, from the uh, group members, absolutely. Great. Uh, oh, and again, no paper. So I'm Laurie Hunter, and I'm a public health nurse from the Subcumaskoka District Health Unit, or also known just as the Health Unit. And um, I sort of see us, uh, see me sort of as a bit of a cheerleader, sort of in the background, um, able to. Uh, obviously, I have a health lens. So when we're looking at, I'm very interested in in developing a healthy community a healthy food system so that we have healthy Aurelians and people who want to come here, economic development that's healthy. So it's, it's all from, the, from that lens or many, many lenses. And so I guess I just give my assistance wherever I can. Uh, I will be sitting on the management uh, team to help to sort of provide a little bit of direction and steering with everybody else that's going to be there. And um, sort of some of that, some of the background stuff. So, so that's why I sort of say a bit of a cheerleader, mm -hmm. um, and I'll just help as much as I can. So that's uh, the health unit, and these resources, for example, are some of the things that at the health unit we've been able to produce. So, because we're funded by the Ministry of Health and Long Term Care, we 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 have some resources that are uh, have the ability to do that kind of thing. Um, We've got many tentacles into the into um, so much around a healthy community. So I'll just stop it there because I really, really could go on for a long, long time. But uh, I just have a question. Yes. Uh, because I talked to the health unit in Barrie a number of years ago, and of course since then the GMO issue has really risen high. And I wondered, um, I mean, at that time, the health unit didn't have a policy on that. Is there some kind of a policy now? Not yet. Because I also, I think uh, a young girl was talking to the Minister of Health, uh, Ambrose, okay. and uh, the health ministry said they have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a question for me, you know, who, who and it really is. Really is. One of the lingering ones that's still there. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. I think we're still trying to figure out who is responsible that. for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you I know. mean in the meantime, it's looking at collaboratives, it's yeah. looking at engagement. Building it's this I think is you, the, the you answer. It. Like it's, it's yeah. the grass up and coming, you know, it's, yeah. it's all together, yeah. so yeah. yeah. If we so grow our own, the own food, then we have control over Absolutely. that. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. The One of the things that we were busy doing is designing something called Terms of Reference. A document called Terms of Reference is something uh, that basically outlines the mission, vision, purpose, goals, and uh, that are endorsed by ourselves, our own committee, and we have then since then submitted it to the city of Olympia um, so that they can take that into consideration as they make their decisions around um, supporting the Olympia. And we're having an open house in two weeks. So if you'd like more information, I've got it. Awesome. I just wanted to plug it because I thought we should be amenable to it. Well, I was funding this. That's a really good question. Up to this point, any of the projects that the Aurelia Food Council has um, 
engaged in that have required funding has been funded through projects through the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit and some of their specialty, special funded directions and through the help of the Sharing Place Food Bank and the collaboration of those two organizations um, to accomplish certain specific goals. For example, the survey that was done called Aurelia's Food Future and the map, which um, we have examples of all over here. Yes, so if you don't have that, you should have, have at least one and make sure you have a good look at that. And that's a project that will probably be ongoing. So other than that, we have no funds. We're completely a volunteer organization um, at this point in time. We have actually no status at this point in time. So one of the purposes of having the terms of reference is to take steps towards form, formulating our organization to the point where we can register as a not-for-profit uh, uh, organization. I don't know about charitable, but it might need to be actually charitable in order for us to go after funding to fund the projects that we want to, to accomplish. So it is a process. Um, but we have the backing at this point of several wonderful organizations including as well as the Aurelia uh, Community Gardens and um, encouragement, I would say, from the city of Aurelia, as well as we have joined um, the uh, Food Alliance, the Simcoe, what is it? Simcoe County. Simcoe County Food Alliance, which is um, one step beyond Aurelia. It is county-centered, and to be a member of that means that we can then access their, their meetings and their information and know what's going on in a broader range of area, geographic. We also have a website, um, a website, Facebook, Twitter account, all those wonderful things.